talk about how to take a custom app and we're going, we've built our custom app, we've described how to do that. I'm now gonna put that into practice with my indexes.com file. Indexes can be a serious pain to manage across multiple environments. Um, I recommend using a custom app to do that. Easiest way, I'm gonna show you how to do, create your own custom app if you want. You can just come into apps, manage apps, and I'm gonna go create an app. And I'm gonna give it lame YouTube. That's gonna be your friendly name, so oops. Wow, what button did I press there? Must have hit the enter button by accident. Okay, this is your user friendly, so I'm gonna put something like this. Honestly, when you're making custom apps for configuration settings, you're not even going to have the user see them. You'll make them not visible. But uh, for the purpose of this video, I'll we'll go lame YouTube. Always make it two decimals, so it's got to be one. It's got um, three versionings there. Here is where you can choose to make it visible or not visible. For the sake of keeping this up, I'll make it visible. But as a general rule, you don't want your setting stuff to be visible. Um, I'll put my uh, name there and I could give a description settings for uh, a demo on making a custom app and I hit save it'll create me the custom app and if I go here I can see that I've got my lame YouTube if I jump over here to my apps I do a listing, I should see lame YouTube. And if I go in, what has it created for me? I have a default directory, a local directory, a metadata, and a bin. And remember I talked about in my previous video, the default and the locals. As a general rule, you're gonna make your changes here in default. Uh, end users will make their changes here in local. Um, for a system settings, often you'll actually see it in local so that they have higher precedence over something that's written in default. Uh, it's, yeah, you can go lots of different ways. In the, in the examples I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually do it in the local here. But let's go into CD default. Let's see what's there. First thing they've got is just a simple uh, app.com file. And you read it, it should look very familiar. Hey, there's the name I gave it. There's my author, description, version, et cetera. That's where it all got written. And it creates you a basic template. Now you go and create these server. I'm going to do make an indexes.com file and make some changes to it and put it in this directory and then I can deploy it out there. Let me first go and show you. Here is an indexes.com. Easiest thing to do, go into Splunk write the name of the comp file you're working with and just say Splunk. In my case, I wrote indexes.com. Came back and gave me a bunch of settings. So if you wanna know what all of these things do, just read the documentation. There's plenty of it. You never, you never have a lack for documentation in Splunk if you wanna read it. Anyway, we're gonna jump over here. I've created two I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually create two different uh, apps. And I, I showed you how to build your app so you know how you can get these things. Once you have a custom app, all you need to do is just uh, keep tweaking. Uh, I basically build a simple folder that holds the basic M info. I change the app.com to name it to whatever I want, change the folder, and away we go. And so, for example, I change this directory's name. If I come in here and I go to the local, I'm going to want to go into here and I'd want to change, I can go and change its name as well, things like that. But anyway, so I've got an app.conf, I've got an indexes.conf. I've already put the data in here. I just wanna show you what I've done with them. There is a volume indexes and an all indexes. I'm gonna come in here, hopefully this makes sense immediately, but if it doesn't, don't worry, we'll come back to it. Again, you got your app file and you got your indexes.conf file. I'm gonna open up this indexes.conf file and I use these for all the different places I've gone. I hold on to them because it just makes it really easy. I got a little bit of documentation. Up here it says, hey, you wanna make sure you vol uh, specify your volume. So for example, I have a primary volume and a secondary volume, and I'm gonna 
tell it it's this is your volume for hot and cold and then where does it go afterwards and i'm going to declare volume primary and volume secondary these are required in the indexes.conf the next file i'm going to show you and so that's why i've put them in here and i've just hard coded in this little path so it knows where to go choose wherever you're going to store your data it could be two different locations it could be the same location but the point is you're going to set up a primary and a secondary volume uh, for storage now if i close minimize this and i go back to my and that's all that app does it just sets a volume.indexes variable. If I come into my lame all indexes, I go into the local, now I open this guy. You'll, if I scroll down, here's a bunch of fields that you might want to use, home, home path, cold path, thawed path. What you'll notice when I come down to indexes is home path, cold path, thawed path. It uses a volume primary. In order for me to be able to say volume colon primary, I have to declare where that goes. Otherwise, I'm going to have to hard code this path into every home path, cold path out there if I want to have that kind of customization. And so that's why I've done it. I've just made it make the code, make the variable one time here. And if for chance that ever changes where it's stored, I can change one time here. And all of my indexes will naturally just change. So that's why we did that. So let's look at this indexes.conf and some of the cool features you can do here. Here is your default stanza. Default applies to every index. And so one of the things you can do right out off the bat, you can't do this from the GUI, is you can say, hey, you know what? I have 300 gigabytes of storage on my um on my, in my data directory where I'm going to store the indexes. So I never, all of my indexes, no matter how big they are, I do not want them to exceed this. And so what you can ultimately do is if I come down here, I can co this is commented out, I can go home path and I can make a cold path, whichever the case you want to be. And you can say, hey, this directory can't be larger than 300. 300,000 megabytes. That'll make sure that no matter what, even if you you don't count all your indexes and you know, as soon as the size reaches 300,000, it will start rolling things off instead of crashing your system. So it's not a bad thing to do. Set a maximum amount of uh, size for everything. It can't exceed this size. And that'll that's what you can do here with your default. Um, you can also, here again, you can set, if you didn't choose to set the primary and local like I did on the other one, here's how you can set your volume primary. I set it in a totally different directory, in a different app, because I'm just showing, you can do it this route, or you could uncomment this code here and do it yourself and place it there and then state how big can volume primary B. And this states that the volume primary cannot exceed 500,000 megabytes. Another, again, another way of controlling so that your index doesn't grow larger than you have uh, space for. And then here, if you had a volume home, a volume cold, di different volumes, just examples. I love these because you go in to a different, each of your different Splunk instances, you have a different purpose and a pro and so I have a basic app that I just go in and I make these configuration settings. I can get my Splunk settings, my Splunk systems up and running really, really smooth because I just have to turn on and turn off the settings I want. Now we come down here and we make Splunk indexes. Um, this is what you want to make sure you do. You really want one index file for all of your indexes. You want to be trying to find them, find your mains written in your search app, your uh, another index is written in this app, in this app. And so the best practice is to always add any indexes you need right here to this indexes directory. And the basic premise is you'll just write home path, cold path, thought path. If I, I talked about setting the auto, the auto lib, the auto um, sizing, and that can be done. See, I don't actually have that setting here, so I don't. I should probably put that in my documents. But you can. There is a. You can put over under here the path. So let's go to CD. 
in my other video, I went and made a, oh, I don't have it here. All right, so what we've got to do is, I'll come back to that that concept, the, where you, if you're going to have lots and lots of files come in, you can write that stanza right underneath here. But let's let's not worry about that for the moment. Um, what if I want to set my, I want to set up each directory to be so big? I can just copy this max volume data size and put it in each one of these stanzas for how big I want them to be. Or if I want it based off of a time, there's this little setting here, frozen, frozen time period in seconds. And I can use this. And there's a little cheat sheet here. Here's one day, one week, one month, one year. Let's say I want it to be one year. I, I want my, um, I don't know why I'd want my main index to be that big, but let's do it that way. One year equals, and so then I can just come still the amount of seconds it is. And voila. Now recognize that this will get overwritten by, there is a precedence if you have uh, run out of storage space first. So you set your uh, data retention here and you've reached your 500 gig limit, but you have not reached your one year in seconds. It will still start erasing your data. So precedence goes to disk space and then time. That's really useful. So again, you do not want to run out of partition space. Your whole system comes to a crash and then it becomes pretty, you got you to clear up space before your Splunk will cooperate again. So I can write a timestamp in there. Anyway, other settings I can do, I can come down here. I've kind of put a nice little, if you have any Splunk-based apps, so you download a Splunk-based app, they want you to build an index, you can write it right here. And basic concept, you'll just copy, copy the code. You'd come down here and let's say there's a, a core light index. You downloaded something from Corelight. You might make it like that, and then you would just replace every block signature with the word Corelight. And then you'd set your retention policies, turn off the comments, and you're free to go. If you have any uh, indexes for yourself, you just add them right here. Now, the beauty of this is this can be applied to a search head and to an indexer, you put this on a deployment server and you push these apps out. Every time you build a new index, go to your deployment server, add that index in there, have it get out to your indexers and to your, you'll need to push it out to your indexers and then push it out to your search head, search heads. And now you're, everybody will have the same list of indexes. Now recognize just the reason, again, search heads, you can create all these indexes, you can set space here, it won't matter because an index, a search head, if it's configured right, will be forwarding its data onto an indexer. But you still want it to know all of the indexes that exist on an indexer so that when you use GUIs and things like that, and you, you uh, that it, and it will, there, there's GUIs in the search head, they'll say, hey, pick the index. If that index isn't listed in their indexes.com file, it won't be able to write it in there. And so this helps make sure that your search heads have an understanding of the indexes that exist on the indexer. Again, Build one indexes.comp file uh, for your deployment server. If you have a master cluster, if you have an uh, index cluster, you might have to build a second one, one that is deployed that manner. Um, but the concept is you, you make your changes, you make your uh, indexes here, any of the different settings you want to apply to it, and you push it out to all of your systems, make one change, all of them have it. And if you have a master indexer, well, then you make two changes, one to the index cluster, one to all everything else. And now all of your systems are aware and have the same indexes. And you don't run into those settings of, hey, this index, this index doesn't exist here, or man, I really wish it would be in the dropdown. Uh, so this here is an example of building your own custom app. You and I've modified the indexes.com. The big thing to remember is make sure that you get rid of all the indexes out of um, other apps or out of, uh, with as housekeeping items out of other apps and make sure that they're not in Etsy apps, sorry, Etsy system, so they get overwritten. Just remember your precedents. I've shown this in other ones. Just remember that 
you uh, order precedence, make sure that the users and systems uh, indexes.conf are not overriding the ones you built. And if you do that, you'll be able to maintain your own um, indexes.conf file with no issues. And so I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, post down below. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel, I appreciate it. Um, and I hope this helps you on your journey from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja.